Neighborhoods are like people. Sometimes they fall on hard times and need a helping hand. In the 1970s, the East Liberty Park neighborhood in Salt Lake City was in decline as residents and businesses left the city for the newly developed suburbs. And evidently, East Liberty Park fit the bill for a neighborhood that could go either way. And the only thing I could figure out is these were older homes and they needed some work. That was a difficult time though because uh, we had banks being accused of redlining. I don't hear much of that issue anymore, but it's where banks actually will not loan in certain neighborhoods for home improvements or even mortgages uh, because they feel like the neighborhoods are on the way down. The neighbors took action. They brought together governments, businesses, and residents to form a partnership they named Salt Lake Neighborhood Housing Services, or NHS. I spent a lot of time in living rooms and around kitchen tables, uh, in boardrooms of banks, uh, meeting with city officials, uh, to really clarify and define exactly what our unique partnership was going to look like. Hard work and perseverance paid off. In 1977, the doors to Salt Lake Neighborhood Housing Services officially opened, committed to the vision of bringing residents, businesses, and government together to revitalize and preserve the neighborhood. But it wasn't all work. There were also neighborhood fairs, parties, and fundraisers. Now people go to ninth and ninth to buy a bicycle or eat a meal or, or go to the coffee garden. And they say, isn't this cool? This is what cities ought to be about. The core value of the organization is that of engaging residents um, through a partnership of uh, private sector, local business, to build and sustain neighborhoods of choice. It's about really bringing people together and responding to what uh, community issues are. In 1982, as word of the accomplishments of neighborhood housing services spread, the organization was invited to expand to Salt Lake City's west side in the Poplar Grove area. I think by educating particularly the government and the corporations, the valuable assets that we have in our neighborhoods, that was something that I was just so totally impressed with. NHS never stopped listening to and identifying the needs of the communities it served. And one was the youth project, now I think referred to as Youth Works. And that was a challenge, but I think, uh, as a rule, came out as a great success story. Youth Works is an intensive job and life skills training program. As a teenager, Cliff Uckerman was ordered to attend Youth Works by juvenile court judge Andrew Valdez. Cliff says at the time he was a big troublemaker, on the verge of being sent to youth prison. The turning point for me um, was just realizing that you know, I could be anybody I wanted to be. I could do anything I wanted to do, as long as I had that support network. So having those adults and those role models say, hey, look, you can do this, you can be this, and, um, you know, helping, helping me to just kind of realize my potential and see that I can get out there and get things done. Cliff finished high school, was awarded a presidential scholarship to the University of Utah, and completed a degree in social work. He even served as the Youth Works director for a while. He says he owes his success to NHS, investing in the community in both resources and people. You know, since the inception of the youth program in, in 1982, I've had the privilege of working with more than 1,800 young people. And I'm always amazed, um, you know, that every week a graduate from the program will stop by and share their successes of completing high school, graduating from college, starting a new business, and, and sometimes even buying their first home. It's, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful gift to me to, to experience that. During the 1980s and 90s, NHS expanded services throughout the west side of the city and began developing real estate building single and multifamily housing, making the American dream of home ownership a reality for families for whom it otherwise would not be possible. We first got involved with uh, neighborhood housing services um, when we were trying to purchase our first home. 
Um, why? Basically because we couldn't afford a house any other way. And, um, you know, they had some great programs with NHS at the time, and we were able to get a loan through them and went from there. What I really liked about, like Dan was saying with NHS, is that they were able to walk us through how to maintain our home. Because, again, we were we never owned our home before. We were always renting. It wasn't just the house that NHS helped us with. They also helped us to become better um, citizens and, and better community members. It gives everyone an opportunity to be a homeowner and people that wouldn't necessarily qualify for a home and a nice home in a nice area. And there's a lot of very wonderful families out there that just needed that little extra helping hand. When Linda Limon and her husband Garnon were house hunting, he called to tell her about a house he liked. The price was right and, and everything. And, and then he turned around very sheepishly and said, well, I've already signed the papers, so it's a good thing you like it. Because <laughs> he, he instantly fell in love with his home. When Garnon passed away, the NHS staff was there to help Linda. And it's so comforting to know that, that that's a system that's out there to help people like me. It was, it was a, it meant an awful lot to me. Community building also means taking care of those in need. Every August, teams of NHS volunteers paint the homes of senior citizens. Thousands of volunteers have painted over 700 homes in the last 27 years. They call it, paint your heart out. Oh, it was wonderful to watch. They just worked so quickly and so thoroughly, and they were all happy. They come out, they paint uh, the exterior of the home, put on a fresh coat of paint, and the impact that it has on some of these seniors is tremendous, but not just the seniors. I, I think the teams walk away with something very different. If it wasn't for the neighborhood housing, I probably wouldn't be living in my house anymore. For a community to grow, it must develop the leadership skills of its members. In 2004, NHS formed an innovative partnership with the University of Utah to found the West Side Leadership Institute. WLI is a leadership training course. NHS has established uh, credibility in the community in a way that uh, is wonderful for the community and, and uh, very helpful for the university in working with them because the University of Utah wants to serve all of the people of Utah, not just some of them. And uh, by working closely with NHS, the, uh, there are opportunities that are available to us in terms of engagement with um, parts of the community and parts of town that uh, otherwise are less available to us. And I wanted to have help with the community garden. I had dreamed for years to do this community garden. There's a, an empty lot next door to my home that has been a weed patch always. It's never been um, built upon or cultivated or anything. With the help of the West Side Leadership Institute, Gina realized her dream. I'm grateful that NHS is there. They are a driving force and I think a nucleus of improvement of education, of resources that just ripple through our community. WLI met yet another community need when it began offering courses in Spanish. Mi joyería es Joyas Liliana. NHS me ha ayudado mucho porque tuve una clase, fui a clases con ellos y he aprendido más cosas a cómo comunicarme y cómo ayudar a las personas, así como las personas me han ayudado a conectarme con lugares importantes como Science Bank, por ejemplo, y a tratar como me han tratado. Perfecto. There are over 230 graduates of the West Side Leadership Institute. They're acquiring skills in conducting meetings and conducting research and uh, creating coalitions and in causing things to happen, causing good things to happen in the community in a way that's just uh, very exciting to see. I believe that it's impossible to say what NeighborWorks' greatest contribution is because they provide so many great services. Their greatest contribution is their existence and their continuing existence and their, and their leadership from uh, Maria Garcias.
In 2003, NHS transformed the site of the old Rancho bowling lanes on North Temple and 6th West into the new city front complex. I think it's remarkable when you think over the last 35 years what has been accomplished with this public-private partnership with NeighborWorks. If my numbers are right, uh, Zions Bank and the other partners have created $500 million worth of economic development. Think of that, $500 million. That's a remarkable sum. And I think it shows the faith that businesses have in this partnership and the trust that they have in NeighborWorks and Maria, that they know that each dollar will be spent to improve the lives of people by giving them affordable housing. This makes everyone uh, better off. This is a win-win situation for all organizations and our communities come out of it stronger and better. Neighborhoods are like people, always changing. And NHS is changing too. It now has a new name, NeighborWorks Salt Lake. But the success of NHS should not only be measured in dollars and cents, brick and mortar. It has helped strengthen neighborhoods, making them safer and more welcoming for young families. It has created a spirit of encouragement and hope in the community and in the hearts of the youth. NHS has succeeded because of commitment, hard work, and wonderful partnerships. We thank those who've contributed these past 30 years and encourage those who haven't been involved to get involved. Give NHS your support. There's still much to be done.